Indeed, the Holy Scriptures says to us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. From the industrious family of Al-Haji Jimo Akintola Udutola, a son was born precisely on the 22nd day of December 1962 at the then Ikeja General Hospital, now known as Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. He was named Bolajoko Abiodun Shakiru Udutola. I was born on the 22nd of December 1962. So Alaji Majid Olushe Gondutola and um, Alaja Basrat Oluwaje Misudutola in Lagos, both from Ijebode. So I'm a full Ijebu man to the core, 100%. The second child amongst seven children, he had an eventful childhood. Growing up was very interesting. It, it, it was in the Agige area of Lagos. Uh, my parents I've just newly relocated from um, Ibadan to Lagos. And there my father established a company. We are a family of seven. Um, I have an elder brother, Olua Femi Odutola. I am number two. Number three is um, a doctor in America in Boston, a pediatrician. Number four is an industrialist, Akim Odutola in Lagos here. Yeah. I'm Pastor Bolo Dutola as a junior brother. I'm the fourth born of seven, yeah? So Pastor is the second born. Uh, we have Mr. Febo Dutola, then Pastor Dutola, Dr. Akini Dutola, then myself. And we have um, two twin sisters, Tawo and Ken, they're all married now, and the last born is the Dutola. Younger brother to Brother Bola Dutola, everybody known as Pastor Bola. A man who hails from the fold of an industrious and party-loving people. Essentially, I come from um, an industrial family, a manufacturing family. Um, if you are above 40, you will know Rotola tires, Rotola foam, and a, little, and a host of other things. So, entrepreneurship is what we met on ground has been normal. Um, when we were born, we just grew up in a setting where production is the norm of the things. Um, so to us, it was normal. After my service, I joined my family, my father's organization, then called Golden Lee Farms. Um, my father began this farm in these premises. So, 62 years ago or so. So, over the years, he built um, this place to what it is. Um, then, in the earlier days, it was the premises of a large poultry enterprise and also um, a large hatchery enterprise. This has been fully on before I joined the family organization in 1985. Um, I was the admin manager. My father himself um, is the first person to manufacture foam in Nigeria. And that was also when he was working with his father. With my grandfather, it was foam, rubber, um, tire soles. With his own elder brother, the same thing. He also had a um, biscuit, Utala biscuit used to um, exist. And then there was um, the three three beauties. When my father went solo, he shifted from rubber to the agri segment, you know, which I think um, was uh, genius um, at that time because um, no matter what will happen, um, sons of men must eat. He got involved in the manufacturing uh, sector or in the agro allied uh, manufacturing sector, and he has made a big success of it, um, and so much so 
that he now becomes a mentor to, uh, to me. He started his elementary education at Ebenezer African Church Primary School, Okeado, Ibadan, between 1968 and 1973, and completed it at Mayflower Junior School, Ikene, from 1974 to 1975. I and my elder brother were shipped to Ibadan for a primary school um, because our father wanted the best of education for us. So there's this school in Ibadan then that was really not a fantastic result. He's almost five, six years older than me. He stayed with one of our grannies when he was growing up and then he came back to Lagos. But along the line, my father equally now saw another school that was seemingly um, taking the upper hand. This was Mayflower. Mayflower had both a junior school and a secondary school. So he removed me from um, the Ibadan school to Mayflower Junior School, where I had a lot of colleagues that were now both moved into the senior school. Olumide Mesioye, currently in America, Olabi Alabanjo, Lukiki Adetuo, I remember him very well, son of a king. Four of my siblings attended the senior school, my elder brother, myself, and the two after me. And in, and in school in those days, it's, it's very funny because Dr. Tachula normally gave us um, a number. So there are times when you don't even know the name of a student, but you know the number. Up till now, some of the numbers remained in the head. If you are trying to figure out who are we discussing, A may know the name, B may know the number, you know. There's a doctor Okwe in America, Cornelius Okwe, um, Shola Kazim, now, well, now Mrs. M. Shola Dinigi, Lara Babari Day, then now Mrs. M. Lara Tunde. In the secondary school, I was Omolara Babari Day. My student number is 3331. Bola Odutola was 3338. I am a classmate of uh, Pastor Bola Odutola. Uh, in, in Mayflower School, in Kenya. By the grace of God, we attended the same secondary school, that is Mayflower School in Kenya. Uh, we have known for about 47 years now. But Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24 says, A man that had friends must shew himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Because from Mayflower, he made friends for life. They have a thing or two to say about him. At the secondary school level, I didn't know uh, my brother Bola Udutola so well because he was an easygoing uh, boy then. How Bola was able to manage to be with us that uh, were most of the tantrum throwing, truants behaving um, uh, friends, but he never got uh, into the kind of trouble we, we normally uh, got into. While we were in secondary school, Pastor Bola was quite a gentle person, a kind person, and um, was uh, full of energy as most boys were at that stage. Growing up, he did not have an inkling about God's original plan for his future, even as he gained admission into the University of Lagos in the year 1980, where he was offered his bachelor's program to study biochemistry. Gained admission into the um, University of Lagos, proposed to study medicine, but I fell short in the cut of marks. So that was how I ended up studying about chemistry. And after four years, we were done. We attended the same tertiary institution. That's a Unilag, a University of Lagos, Akoka, Iyaba, Lagos. I've known Pastor Bola for as long as our campus days in the University of Lagos. We were together in Unilag for a period of time. We met in the university. Our character had such moments during his stay at Unilag. He shared some of them with us. I got in at 17. For the first time, you are now having yourself, being alone, as it were, under no supervision. 
At that point, you are the one that will have to advise yourself how to order yourself in those four or five years um, that you're going to spend in university. It's a vast, it's a vast area. Students are there in their thousands. We are grouped together by department, by faculties, and of course, by the halls in which we reside. And then, of course, again, there are so many societies. Um, I remember the keg guides, the pan wine drink cards, um, and a litany of others, you know, any of them. Um, I didn't join any. I did not really want to, I wasn't interested. I also had um, colleagues. Bishop um, Atun Rashi now is an American you know, in Philadelphia. Dr. J.K. Ikea, um, Idowu Shotomi, um, Taiwo Shembanjo, you know, and a, and a host of others. After so many years of knowing you, I can confidently say three things about you. You're kind, supportive, and a very funny man. I doubt that my campus days will have been half as interesting without you. In no time, a happenstance situation that saw him stand in for an absent member to share the word of life during fellowship moved him from being the library executive of his fellowship to being one of those who regularly handled Bible study sessions. He tells us more on how this aspect of his life evolved. After my conversion, in those days there were just two, two fellowships, at least in the University of Lagos. The one we call the LVCU, the Lagos Varsity Christian Union, and the SCM, Student Christian Movement. For these two elders, who have been on my neck before, were in the, very, were in the smaller one, the SCM. Um, I prefer to be in a larger one. But then, they mounted pressure again. Now you've been converted, more or less you are first fruit. Why are you heading towards um, LVCU? One of them now gave um, a, a council, I would call it. What I would call a Gamaliel council. Um, he said, look, in a large fellowship, you will just be lost in the crowd. But in a small fellowship, you will have no option but to function in one area or the other. And it is whilst functioning that the grace of God upon your life can be revealed. That made um, a lot of sense to me. So I joined the SCM. Immediately I became the um, bookstore secretary. So my job was just to get all of the books. Pastor Kumi still lectured us mathematics in the university for a year. The brother who was supposed to take the Bible study failed to show up. And when it was almost certain that he will not show up, brother, or rather pastor now, Shukwakim Bade of the Apostolic Church, knocked me. We are not sure brother Ezekiel will come to church today. In the case he does not show up by 7.30, you are taking the Bible study. And my heart skipped. Where do I start from? What do I do? What will I say? And I protested. The man said, just go there. If the only thing you know is that for God so loved the world, and uh, you know, all this stuff, just go there and say it. And that was how I moved into the teaching ministry. When he went to Unilag, he went in um, as a Muslim, he came out as a born again um, Christian. Yeah. So, but when my dad heard about war that he, he has converted to um, Christianity, he was mad. Back then, ah, oh my lad, oh sorry, oh my lad, I don't know who settled the matter, but I just believe the Holy Spirit, <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit intervened. He must have a reason for going to SU. You see, if you are talking about Femi and Aki, Aki can come and meet me in Ibadan. And then we take off 11 midnight. We are going to Ife for a party. And the same with Femi. Ah, Jide Kilonshe. We go out, we go parties. What boys do in those days, you know? Babes, you know? Drinking, partying, and all those kinds. Of... But Bola does not have any bit of that. You know, he's an issue. 
If you try to drag him, he won't even go. I remember the sacrifice you made when you first became a Christian. How I used to question the Lord, asking him why he allowed you to go through uh, the persecutions you endured. And the Lord said, why, why not? I am making my servant. Brabola Odutola's clothes were confiscated several times to discourage him from attending any fellowship. At another time, we even asked that the father will send the, the Megat, the night watchman of the father, to, to go to the campus to beat him up if he was found attending any Bible study or anything fellowship. When he attended the meeting on campus where Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, had been invited to minister. According to him, the methodical way Pastor Adeboye preached on that day informed his decision to join the RCCG when he graduates from Unilag. This was the beginning of his calling and pastoral ministry. I served in Anambra State, the old Anambra State, with um, pastors Andrew Adeleke, I always call him Demola Adeleke, um, Pastor Larry Adeboye in Abekuta, uh, many, a, a, a few others. Which church will I go after campus, after schooling, after NYSC? That had been answered by an event in um, 1982 in the year two on campus that the geo minister in Rust of Lagos. I think um, it was shortly after I became geo. He came to the University of Lagos to minister in the GF Adia Jai Auditorium, Memorial Auditorium. And I was there. Um, and when I, when I heard the gospel from him, simple, well-sequenced, um, precept upon precept, line upon line, you know, straight away, um, I knew this was it. Uh, Mosso is um, a famous mathematician. So I just concluded, after I'm done with university, after service, after schooling, then um, if I'm going to go to any church and I'm Lagos-based, it will be RCCG. The scripture says to us in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Verse 6 of the same scripture tells us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Born and bred from a family of industrialists, and business-minded people, I'm sure you'll learn something as well as he shares his journey. There are some things you know just by being in the environment. Um, working for about 14 years with him, I equally it um, went solo because um, I discovered that if care is not taken, you, you might just be in a family setting, but you must also factor in the future into all them calculations. So that the element of, though you picked up in the family setting, you also still, you also um, somehow must expand it. When I was in um, Mayflower, some of my colleagues, they called me Omar Babele you know, jokingly. And I, over that I shake my head that if only these guys know the profitability in eggs, um, they wouldn't say that. Um, so I, I, I picked all of that from him. And then, um, not all, but a segment of, the Agrolite is a large um, expanse of uh, business, fishery, degree, poultry, broilers, um, feed making, finished feed, feed making rather, hatchery, you know. As at that time, I was already converted. So I must pick a segment that is ministry compliant. One, two, I must pick a segment whose turnover is um, substantially reasonable. I must pick a segment that down the line 
I will have a good command of my time. And um, with those parameters being in place, I zeroed in, I zeroed in on the vegetable oil production and animal protein production, which is what we do now. When we graduated from university, uh, Bollard, unlike most of us, uh, elected to start uh, being in self-employment. Hard work, you can't take it away from him. Someone who believes that there's dignity in, in labor. It pushes you to do more, to learn more, to do things in a different way. Uh, you are someone that is very, very hardworking. No doubt about that. Outside of church, honestly, he's either at home or in the office. Not like us that we are working about labors. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So says Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22 to us. I must say that the finding of his beloved roommate was rather unconventional. Married for over 35 years, a journey that started when he was 25 years and eight months. Marriage is one area where an individual, male or female, must not make a mistake. You make a mistake in that one area, your life can become totally miserable. I met my wife through a friend of my senior brother, Gideon Daniel um, by name. Um, he came visiting um, with my wife at that time. He was aware I'm already into this Christian business. She also was into it. You know, they, they lived in the same um, um, neighborhood way back in um, Oshodi. So his bringing her was the first time I met her. He wanted me to encourage her and strengthen her the more. So since then I've been encouraging her and strengthening her till this day. I met um, my husband through a big brother. We lived in the same environment. And so one day he just came to our house and he said to me, oh Bumi, you are born again. Oh, I have a friend who has a brother. He too is born again. You know, he kept on talking and talking. I was just looking at him. And uh, he said something, I, I would love you to meet him. I said, ah, well. Next day, he was already at home, picked myself and my sister to my husband's family house and then... My name is Baba Jiri Daniel. I'm a family friend to Pastor Bola Odutola, um, Pastor Mrs. Bola Odutola. We grew up together. I was with Bumi and the junior sister, Buki. I think he's predestined. Bola is the only one. I met him in the sitting room. Ah. This is my junior brother. And I, you know, we greeted each other. Bumi from Osho, the sector. Bola at Agege. I don't think, if I've not come in, except by grace of God, I don't think they've ever met. Bumi and Bola are practically the same thing. Bumi does not go out. Bola does not go out. So he asked for my phone number. I can remember that he called me the next day and um, he came around to our house and we started talking. From there, the relationship developed. They become friends, and eventually they become husband and wife. We went to Holy Cross, you know, to do the wedding. We had the reception at um, um, City Hall. And I thank God for God to use me to facilitate the relationship. We were match mate. Match mate. Yes. His beloved roommate, with whom he has three beautiful children, tells us about his real face. My name is Ganeas Oluwabumi Odutola. I'm someone who loves God, believing and trusting God to be the next governor of our state. Pastor Tola is a very calm person. He's not really someone that is troubled. The only time I've seen my husband cry was when the woman that gave a testimony that uh, they lost their dad and they didn't have money for the school fees and the girls were going to commit suicide, you know. Even, I've never seen him cry. You know, that was the first time I, I, I saw him being emotional. I'm a Lagosian. I see money today, the next day, I finish the money. But it was someone who told me that you can actually eat your profit, you can play around with it, but you can't mess up with your capital. So it's someone that you can't stay with him and your brain will not reset. Ah, my husband is not really that too romantic. On a scale of one to 10, I'll give him five over 10. You know, he's not very spontaneous like that. And I'm just hoping maybe he can just try, just try that it will not kill you. Just yeah. try to just be spontaneous where, you know, um, you just just wake up one morning and tell your, 
your <laughs> your wife that oh you know what just sleep don't worry i'll go and do breakfast on the bed i know it can't happen but just let's let's just say it so that it's not be as if we did not say it but you know there's nothing god cannot do i know my father was saying your mother that sent you but she did not send me <laughs> like if we want to socialize yeah we don't get him involved you get what i'm saying because you know we know it's going to take us to the next level you get what i'm saying i have learned to accept him as who he is we're created differently when it comes to talking when it comes to checking on me you know um, my husband is good at that. He doesn't joke with his children. I've been fortunate to have someone who is so much devoted to his children, yes. He doesn't joke with them. Even if he's with uh, um, um, Joe Biden and he calls any of them, he will cut the call. Ah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of difference, especially with the last born, because the generation is quite different from the early one so if anybody says otherwise we are gonna have a big fight honestly <laughs> it's quite better than the early stage when they were younger i want to give god the glory that i met him i don't know what my life will have been without my husband dare i say that their love story will intrigue you was it love at first sight please hear from the loving husband himself no 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 as a matter of fact, I know from the scriptures that beauty is vain. I know that um, the lifespan of beauty is so short. I know that um, the lifespan of character is so long. So right from there, I've made up my own mind that I'm not going to marry by beauty, you know, but by character. But then again, there's just no way by which you can have all of the information um, with your own knowledge alone. So you just simply need to pray. Ah, it wasn't love at first sight. Though. Ah, love at first sight. Okay. It wasn't love at first sight, though. Uh, because, you know, I never thought of marriage. Uh, but, um, but as days, months, I began to see him as someone, you know, you could actually really settle now with. You know, she resembles um, Dr. Jacobs. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so yeah. this time I... I just remember, I love this picture. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Blessed with three biological children and two granddaughters, and many spiritual children and grandchildren, his quiver is full of well-shaped arrows. My name is Maureen Kemolei, and I'm Pastor Odutola's first born. My name is Aurelio Odutola, I'm Pastor Bola's son. Um, my name is Obisola Oluwatife. I am a consultant and entrepreneur. I am 25 years old and I'm the last born of Pastor Bola Odutola. My name is Olamide, daughter of Pastor Bola Odutola. You know, he was that dad that was always available for us. Even with his busy schedule, that's him and mom. Last born child, uh, borderline sport, but yes, it's it's as anything like any daughter would want. So that's how our relationship is like. He is a man after God's own heart and he's a leader. You know, when we went to Covenant University, every single, you know, um, exit, you know, um, holidays, my dad is already there to pick us. He doesn't even send drivers, even as old as we were. He would not send a driver to come and pick us. For, never, um, you know. And so I, I felt like that sacrifice was just beyond amazing. I don't know if I can do that. Like I said, he was always present, traveling together. In school, he would usually come, uh, picking us up from even secondary school, I remember. Throughout primary school, I think even up until secondary school, actually up until uni, um, my father used to like drop all of us and like pick us up, right? So that's one thing. So, but one, one of the memories that stands out to me is I remember during primary school, one time when he came to pick me up during primary school, he had his Mercedes Green or something like that. And there was one particular song that like we used to play and I think we used to sing along to. And it was um, Brenda Fassi's Bulind Leila. I don't know. I don't know the lyrics, but I go something like Bulind Leila, eh, Matukosi, or something like that. Okay, the first memory I had with him was my first time with plane. <laughs> in the plane, it was, I was really scared. And then it was really teasing me like, ha. Ah. Like if I don't hold the chair, something can happen. Like, and I actually believed, and I had to hold the chairs, and I was really scared. And when we were going to land, it was like, "Am I ready?" 
have I prayed? I was like, no, I'm just going to pray. I was like, I have to pray. I was like, so why is he not praying? Is that because he's a pastor? I'm like, what? Pastor, I'm most so grateful that he's alive with us. You know, I have so many friends that, you know, their, their fathers are no longer with them. So I'm genuinely grateful that I have my dad um, alive with me. So, I mean, I don't think there's any other thing that I would want from him to just please stay alive to 80, 90, 100. We have to stay married, basically. I'm also a new girl. We have to just see me on the road. I'm like, oh, you are this. And like, I mean, I think just how I am welcomed, not necessarily that they would give me money or anything materialistic, but then like, it's just, oh yes, you are, you're, you're related to somebody that has been of great value to me or that has helped me in some time. This is my way of paying it forward. So definitely they are perks. And then I have enjoyed them and I use them to the fullest. <laughs> oh, he has a good name. Yeah. So when people hear you, yeah, possible that's one. People try and be nice to you. Obviously, like you know, because there are lots of people that have been under his ministration, you know, in the many years that he's been a pastor. And so I walk into rooms and people would recognize me and they'll give me, you know, and they'll be they'll, they'll be favorable to me. Some people might even I might even enter into a restaurant and someone say, oh, Are you a pastor? This other daughter, yes, they pay for my food. I love food, so that's good, you know, um, or just get gifts or just different things. So people send me messages. In fact, on social media, people send me DMs and they are praying for me because of my dad and sometimes you know it just overwhelms me i'm even filled with gratitude i, I cry sometimes and I'm like wow and that's why you know when the bible says that you know a good man will leave you know um inheritance and legacy for his own choice children's children and you know i even look forward to more pecs where somebody will just say ah, ah. yeah pastor tell us that i take this key to range rover I take this house to banana island i know that somebody in this audience somebody can do it for you and you know you can do it true so i'm waiting i'm expectant and that's when i know that yes ah, ah, my father has really 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 impacted everybody here pastor bola as people used to call him um he's a humble pastor not bossy, friendly, but apart from that, he's principled. So Pastor Dutola is a very uh, principled uh, person, very grounded and um, I, I, I'll say real. Pastor Dutola is a man who is full of wisdom. He has the gift of wisdom. There's this uncanny way of um, diffusing Tension. I mean, the way he just goes about solving things. You know, when you talk about a mouth and a tongue that cannot be gainsaid. So I'll talk about the gift of wisdom in him. Pastor Odutola is a father, is a good manager, is a person to work with. So it's a pastor that uh, is also connected with the people, um, feels the burden of the people and actually takes upon the burden of the people. Despite being seen as mama's favorite, he did not display the usual nuances associated with children that are termed in that way. Let's hear what he has to say about this. Well, I think I'm more of mama's boy in a quiet way. I will be lying, but let me just say that I'm his favorite, but I know that it's a lie, but you know, I will still accept maybe deep down because what God cannot do does not is maybe as he's turning 16 now, I will now become his favorite. But before 60, we already know who his favorite is. He treats all of us with the same amount of love and care. I mean, maybe there's one favorite with us among us. <laughs> A man who upholds family dearly, he was enthralled when he beheld his firstborn daughter for the first time. And also when he had the privilege of welcoming his first granddaughter into the world. A baby that represented the fourth generation of his lineage. Oh, another, another beautiful thing again. The prayer and the blessing upon the man Job, that and Job saw his children and his children's children till the fourth generation. The prayer is always to see more generations. So when we saw our first time grandchild, it was still a, a continuation of the initial feeling of seeing the first child, you know. Beautiful, beautiful, great experience. But I know that my dad had always preached about early marriage, but I just figured that maybe like 24 should be like the early marriage um, that he was looking at. But I got, even got married at 22. And so it means that he had met my husband at when I was 21. I think that he also had like peace of mind with my husband. I saw him first time 
my wife Morenike took me um, to the house. There was no nothing particularly struck me. He was calm, he received me well. I think that my, my husband also made it easy for my dad to um, accept him. So everything just went I mean, all the prayers and um, all the things that you know they had also checked background as well family i would say 10 years plus the relationship has been very positive i i would say i've been uh, the one benefiting the most from the relationship because he's a man of wisdom uh, it's something you quickly get to understand about him um 11 years counting i have never had a husband come to report her to me, never in the 11 years. Um, to me, I'll, I'll tell the younger ones to be more patient, yes. So um, again, I think that's one thing that I would really applaud my dad for. There was no pressure. I, like I mentioned earlier, I literally do not even remember sometimes that I was a pastor's daughter because it just allowed us, you know, be who we were and, um, you know, give your life to Christ by yourself. There was no pressure, there was no, you know, um, that I must, uh, demanding things. And so it was easy. So I did not put any pressure. And that's why even when I even became a pastor's wife myself, people usually will ask me, how do you cope being a pastor's wife? And I say, because I don't put pressure on myself. I don't allow the world to put pressure on me. It's between me and my God. In fact, before I became a pastor, I was one of the first sets of people I consulted. And um, he gave me very clear advice about the fact that it's a good thing. I think that we have an interesting relationship, a fantastic bond. I mean, like, um, you know, growing up, my dad, you know, very accessible. He was always around. My husband is someone who is a devout, devoted father. A detailed description of his impact on the lives of all those who have come across him will cause us to have this peace in different parts, like the movies, called from the best-selling books written by Sidney Sheldon and the likes. I remember when my dad was a little bit ill and uh, Pastor Mola came to the house, to the family house and prayed for the whole family. He's a man of integrity. I love that one about Pastor Mola. Pastor Mola has been an amazing brother to me. I can recall back then in my growing up years, he used to help me with my school assignments. After the assignment, he will now give me some words to spell out. He gives me some complex words to spell out. I remember when we met about 30 years ago. I was received so warmly by you and Mommy Reni, and for that I am grateful. You've been so supportive through the years, and you've been there with us in good times, um, like during the Mommy's graduation and also through tough times, like when my dad passed. I am Tinu Idewu's wife, and I just want to say a few things about my brother-in-law. He is an awesome inspiration to all of us. He's a wonderful person. In the area of uh, cleanliness, I give it to him. Mune so categorically is one of the best for Gati Motimba to serve of the past 15 years ago. He's someone I look up to. Are you with me? You know, we are a little bit bad. You get what I'm saying? We do all sorts. You get what I'm But we cannot even tell him. Because sometimes when life issues drift you, and there are few people you can talk to that will not mess you up or that will not ridicule you. He's been a wonderful brother. Always looking after the young ones. He's always there for me. He's more like my mentor. I look up to him. Uh, he's, he's a very cool and nice man. And then one of the things I enjoy mostly about him is his uh, simplicity and gentility, which I can translate to royalty. Pastor Bola is ever calm. No matter what the situation is, you see him in his calmness. And I learned from him that look, when trouble comes, just give it a bit of a little bit of time. It, the, the trouble will, will pass. You know, I've seen him do some things that are like, wow, he's not even rumpled. That is the kind of legacy I, I, I could pick from, from Pastor Bola. He's very supportive to our classmates. 
and um, and and in recent times, I'm also seeing that he has been successfully mentored his children, his younger ones, um, um, all the Odutolas that I know. Uh, they they are supportive, loyal friends. And I reported the case of the couple to to him. I said, bro, see you. Uh, one of your people, one of your sons in the Lord, keeping malice with the with the wife. Uh, we want you to step in. At least if he will not listen to me, he will listen to you that you are his pastor. But he was able to solve that problem. You are a good guy. You are someone that can be trusted. You are someone that is dependable. And uh, we have seen the you know this. The result of this, even in the works of your of ministry, we have seen how God has blessed the ministry, the people that you minister to, and the people that is under your care. I remember how you used to buy meal tickets and put it under pillows of fellow brethren who could not afford a meal plan on the campus and remain anonymous. He has imparted my life by the messages we hear from him. In one of the messages, he said that a person or a man should not depend on one source of income. He should have at least five sources of income. Pastor Nicola is a very forthright, honest, disciplined, humble man of God. His friendship, his life is so magnetic. So magnetic that it's, it was as if we have known each other for several years. Um, like a blood brother, a brother I never had. We see this mind in him, from his kind affection to widows, to his dedication to seeing that all, as much as is possible, have access to good medical care, thus setting up a support system for those in urgent need to deal with diverse medical challenges to helping indigent members of the church get quality education, to leading projects that provide amenities and structures for public schools, which has earned the church where he pastors an award. Let me scale it up a little bit spiritually speaking. Um, the man of God said the reason why we are here is to serve as, um, is, is to serve as sacrifices to others. Um, the man went ahead to say that the sun does not shine for itself, it shines for the earth. The river does not drink its own water, you know, it supplies it. The forest, or rather the trees, you know, do not produce fruits for themselves to eat. It's always, it's always for others. So the agenda and the blueprint will be one, um, sustain the family, two, be of um, good to the community. I thank God for your philanthropic work, including providing educational services to the children of Lagos State, and also providing healthcare services um, through your grants to provide cardiac surgery to those who are underprivileged and cannot afford it. They are also involved in value adding uh, 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 business enterprises, which also, in my opinion, is helping uh, our society. They don't do many things for me, because sometimes if they do something for me, they send my became go school. And if I'm really broke, I can easily call it. Pastor, uh -huh. sing, 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 sing. I want to kill a So you get it. Ah, but uh, it's a bad one here. But if I didn't go, if I can tell me what I want, he will search it out. He is the person that when he sets his hand, I mean his mind to say, okay, I want to help this person, he's going to do that to the very end. For the accounts here on earth, we can say that you, Pastor Bolajoko Abiodun Udutola, are loved dearly and you are highly appreciated. Man of God, I love you. Today I see your friend. I rejoice with you and your entire household, your wife and your beautiful children. Pastor Bola has made, for me, Christianity, I've made it as simple as ever. 
while we were growing up, we see Christianity as a rocket science. But if you are sitting under Pastor Bola's ministration, it's so simple. We appreciate God Almighty for all that the Lord had used him to do this years, for the way God has used him to support humanity, for the way God has used him to mentor so many, many, many people, and for the way God has used him tremendously to mold the work of God forward. He's a person that is constant as a light. I call him Mr. Florissant. And because he's Mr. Florissant, he will continue to be the kind of person he is. How many of these blessings are we not grateful for? God has been faithful. He has been so good to us. Our eyes have seen it, and we shall testify. For in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I think that when I was growing up, I, I legit thought that my father was like Dangote or Otodola. So today, I feel like my father is a multi-billionaire, but he's just hiding it. But we'll find out very soon because there was nothing that I wanted that I would bring up to him that he would not find a way. How he did it, I don't know. He's very straightforward, he's honest. Um, what you see outside is what you get, even in, in the house. So I wake up every single day, every single morning, um, hearing him pray, hearing him worship and sing around the house. I don't know that like, one way or the other, you would also inculcate it, right? Um, so that's definitely been the one thing growing up again in a, not, I wouldn't say religious in the same, in the sense that like, we're not just going through the theatrics. I see it in his life, do you understand that? And so for me, he's a man of wisdom. I've learned a lot. Pastor Dutala is a man that is full of humor. I mean, you're around him and you're just laughing in the seriousness of whatever it is he's talking about. The most important uh, fun part is the wisdom which he disburses, um, especially about um, your finances. Anytime we are here, he calls us and corrects us like a father. Individuals have also benefited a lot from listening to those nuggets of wisdom. But he was a kind person. He was a gentle person, and um, he is still. He still has those attributes. We haven't got. I haven't got enough attributes to describe him. To be frank with you, and I stumbled on a letter that he wrote to me about twenty-five years ago. In that letter, he was advising me and encouraging me on life matters. And um, what I saw now is that when I look back, the contents of the letter was as if he was giving me a prophecy then because all what he wrote to me then has already been fulfilled in my life. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. He is not just blessed with preaching the word in dynamic ways. He is also a prolific writer. The way God has been using Pastor Bola Udotola in the body of Christ now writing books and uh, taking counseling, uh, happy home things and so on and so forth. I thank God very much for a brother. He has, by the help of God, authored books that stir up your spirit man, equipping you to stand out as a formidable Christian in these end times. You will do well to lay hold on his books titled God's mantle in the hand of a rebel, the power of righteousness, attend to your soul, and terminating the cycle of slavery. I love reading. I love reading. Um, by reading, you are feeding your soul. He reads a lot, a lot. He reads a lot. One of the greatest books I've read today is um, by a man of God who lived some three, four hundred years ago, Thomas Brooks. Thomas Brooks by name. Title Holiness, the crown and glory of Christianity. You read the book and your heart will nearly come out. You read the book, you will be wondering, with these standards, will I show up in heaven? When he comes back from work, he loves to watch CNN, National Geographic. He loves to be vast in all areas. 
you can't catch him. You can't even say he's a science student. You can't say he's an art student. That's one thing about him. You know, he's knowledgeable in a lot of areas, politics, name it, um, business, what else again, um, news, you know. So wherever we live, that library must be kept out. At a very early age, he knows about what's going on in the country, like the current affairs, law, everything, yeah? He's very, he's very brilliant. A songwriter said, a heart like yours is my desire. A heart like yours is what I'm searching for. Full of compassion, nothing wrong within. Please hear me, Lord. Give me a heart like yours. Pastor Bola Odutola has this heart, full of compassion, always wanting to give and bless. Wisdom commands that 60 going forward, every individual must now give back to society. So giving back is the agenda. It's someone who, who, who is compassionate, who loves people, who loves um, giving to the less privileged. Educational wise, uh, health care is good in it. Being focused on the things that like would provide for the family and just and just finding a way to build a life that you want for yourself. And also being very generous and helping people out. I guess life is beyond you and your family, right? You need to pay back and give back to the community that you serve. For all you do, we are assured that the Lord will give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth. Happy Diamond Celebration, Pastor. We love you and know that the God you have dedicated your life to loves you more. So my husband on his sixth year birthday, Balajoko Abiyod and Shakiru Dino Dutala. I want to celebrate God's grace upon your life and I want to thank God uh, for God's faithfulness at 60, especially in a nation like Nigeria. God has kept you to this age and my prayer for you, Balajoko, is that you will live long to eat the fruit of your labor. I sent you a boom will never survive in your body. Every time I'm walking to, you will never experience the death of any of your children and your grandchildren, and even me, your wife, in the name of Jesus. I'm Wagbo, by the grace of God. We're going to live longer and longer and longer, and both of us will enjoy the fruits of our labor in the name of Jesus. So, if the angel of the Lord should descend now, that wish your brother just one thing, I will ask the angel of the Lord, give him sound and LD. Good else. Happy birthday, Daddy. Um, you know, I love you so much and I'm so grateful to God that he's seen you through, you know, 60 years. You don't look 60, by the way. You look like you're like 32. Um, and I know that, you know, you continue to age like fine wine. You keep growing better and better in wisdom and stature. You know, um, God will continue to keep you. You know, the record that you set, nothing will tarnish it in the name of Jesus. Happy birthday, Dad. I'm wishing you long life good health, prosperity, um, maybe another 40 or 60 years, o only God knows your heart desire, but we want to have you around for a long time. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Daddy. This is from Bulu Atife, your favorite daughter, as I have my name saved on your phone. I wish you all the best things in life. I promise to be less stressful in just this one year, <laughs> right? And I pray that like God will, God will keep you. Right, God will keep you in good health, in more wealth. You will see more grandchildren as you so desire, and everything would work out well for you. I wish you long life and prosperity, in good health and in happiness. I pray that God will continue to bless you, God will strengthen you. I pray for peace that surpasses all human understanding. Yeah, happy birthday, Daddy. Um, congratulations. Um, it's a privilege, I count it a great privilege to be regarded as your son-in-law. Um, I've learned so much from you and I know that the many years that God still has for you ahead, if Jesus tarries, will be, so, will be um, of great impact, not just to myself, but to even many people you, have, you are yet to meet. We can't have been all this without the Holy Spirit and of course his lovely wife, Pastor Bulu Dutola. So I'm like actually saying happy birthday to both of them. Thank you very much, Pastor Bola. I appreciate you and I love you badly. Uh, the Lord who has used you thus far, 
will continue to use you even in the next 60 years in the name of Jesus. Happy birthday to you. We wish you long life and prosperity, greater grace and anointing. You are a good man. It's going to be 60. I pray that uh, by the grace of God, you'll be 70, um, 80, 90. That they will live as long as he wills and he wishes to. Um, and that for those years, the Lord will give him, his wisdom will continue to grow. Um, it will continue to dwell in peace. Um, and that everything that he wishes for himself, his family, and his spiritual children, the Lord will grant in the name of Jesus. Oh, congratulations to him on this 60th birthday. It takes the grace of God to make 60, especially in Nigeria with all the problems and challenges. We wish him many more in the name of Jesus. I, I wish uh, Bola many happy returns. I'm proud and uh, to be your friend, to be your brother. I uh, pray that Almighty God uh, give us opportunity for many, many more moments. Happy birthday to my brother, Pastor Bola Odutala. I wish him long life. My friend, if you feel special today, it is because you are on behalf of uh, my family, my wife, Pastor Lola, Atun uh, and children, we wish you a happy birthday. Once again, congratulations and happy birthday. We wish we could have been there, but we are reassured that you're supported by the entire family and friends, and we hope that you're going to have a fantastic celebration, and um, we hope you all have fun over there. I want to wish you a happy birthday. Many, many happy returns. Wa Dagba, Wa Dogbo, Wa Ferij Dogbi, Wa Ti Yawe, Eh, Pe, 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 Eh, Ni Fuju Sokun Omo, Mo Ni Fuju Sokun Eni Ij, Eh, Ni Fuju Sokun Omo Mo, Eh, Ni Faison Luba, Ojo Yin Adale. Eh, Almighty Allah, keep him strong, wealthy, long life and prosperity. Hey, Pastor B, happy 60th. I hope you're having a wonderful celebration. The whole crew is here. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Uncle. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Pastor Bola, I wish you a happy birthday and I hope that you celebrate many more happy years on the land of living. On behalf of my wife, my entire family and myself, I want to wish Pastor Paula Vitola a very happy 60th birthday. We are saying congratulations to our daddy, our friend, our mentor, and we wish you long life in good health in the name of Jesus. I wish you a very happy birthday, long life and prosperity. I wish you happy, happy birthday. God bless you. I look forward to spending many more years with you, laughing. I love you. Mwah. Have a lovely, 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 lovely happy birthday. I love you dearly. No other father is perfect for me. And I wish you all the best. Mwah. Amen. Happy birthday, sir. Love you and God bless you. Bola Joko, Shakirudin, Ututola.